But church, I submit to you in moments when things go contrary to plan, when success withers on the vine, when you feel as if everything you thought you had is falling by the wayside, sometimes you'll find that people will leave you and leave you all alone. If I'm on Main Street, I just need to hear somebody say amen. Back in September, um, playing McNeese, McNeese State, uh, got hurt on a screenplay. Pretty much, uh, D lineman landed on me, landed on my throwing shoulder. Um, separation in the AC joint, completely separated. What was going through your mind when it happened? When it happened, honestly, I was trying to get back out there. Um, I couldn't even lift my arm, but I just knew, like, I wanted to get back out there for my team and whatnot. Didn't know the severity of the injury, injury right then and there. I knew something was wrong. Uh, it was my first time just being on the ground for a while. But once I got to the sideline, I just immediately told the coach to get me back out there and they, they helped me out. When did you realize the severity of the injury? About a week later, I um, went to go see a doctor and uh, he told me what was, what was going on and told me that, you know, if I was to try to come back and play, I'd be about 30 to 40 percent, you know, and trying to uh, shoot it up every week to play and whatnot. That's that's not something that you know I wanted to do. You know, even though I did want to be there for my team, I got to think about longevity too. today with good news. See, the power of our faith is that we were not created to be humiliated. God did not create you or me to be embarrassed by Tom, Dick, or Harry, Skippy, Sally, or Sue. God does not mean for the weight of mistakes made by others or by us to rest upon our shoulders forever. God does not mean for you to be trapped behind prison walls of your own making. God does not mean for you to be sad and disappointed and down on yourself. God does not mean for you to cry all night and weep all day. Somebody better get on board. God is not shipping you off to an isolated island. God does not celebrate when you sit like a bump on a log, a member of the frozen chosen, acted like you've been defeated and there is no more destiny inside of you. No, my brothers and sisters, the writer of this epistle says it does not matter matter how wrong you have been it does not matter how alone you have felt and I'm preaching to somebody in this church you gotta make shift composite here I need it yeah you're right here I didn't get it this year so my name is Victor Guevara I'm a student physical therapist here at Advanced Rehab here in South Tampa been here for about a month or so now. Been working with uh, Noah. We've just kind of been recovering, you know, rehabbing his, his AC joint. He had an injury, got tackled in a game, kind of landed on his shoulder, which is a pretty common injury. Anytime we land, kind of like directly on our shoulder, that AC joint, it's uh, kind of held together with some ligaments. And when we land on a lot of force, it has a tendency to, to kind of tear or rupture. So that's kind of the case with Louie. And he's progressing well, so as he progresses, we'll start adding new exercises, kind of challenge, kind of simulate 
game speed and um, just kind of the impact that he'll start to take, just kind of get his body used to that again. It's a real cool little dynamic workout that challenges different muscles at different times depending on where he's at in the movement. Play position here. I'm from Texas, my name's Oli. Yeah, yeah. I'm at home. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, pop this on the wrist, your throwing wrist. Yeah, put it together. Right here. All right. Let's get you three sets of 15, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and I panned out. That's a good. That's a good form right there. Oh yeah. No, you, <laughs> I see. You, know, you should tell Janice to come in here and go through one of your workouts. I, I really should. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, once he's got, I'm not gonna lie with Janice. He, you probably get through it. I've been working out with him a few times. You <laughs> probably get through it. Probably sprinkling some four hundreds on. Yeah. He likes to run. <laughs> it's funny because if I ever think about you two, you know, you're the you're the mobile guy. <laughs> the mobile guy. He, he mentioned that he's like, he's like, you know, you, you run. That's what you do. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm gonna run long distances. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like I, I run about five seconds. Quick burst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quick burst. I'm done. That's all it. I was on three sets on that. Right? Yeah, that was three. All right. Cool. All right. So how'd you meet Jameis? I met Jameis Winston walking into rehab one day. I was walking in to um, the, the front doors of the building and he gets out the car and he stops me. And he's like, hey, come over here. So I go over there, you know, we dab each other up. And he's like, man, I see you in here all the time. I know you play quarterback just off of some of the stuff that you do. And he was like, you should come work out with me one time. And, you know, we went in there, we exchanged numbers, you know, got the rehab session in that day. And that day he, he talked to me the whole time. It was amazing, you know, for a guy, you know, like him, Hot the trophy win the first round, draft pick to come, you know, to see me and you know to, to take me under his wing like that, I'm very grateful for it. My first workout with him, we worked out for three hours. I've never thrown up during a workout in my life. My first workout with this man, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I can't, I can't even finish the workout, I'm not gonna lie. I threw up the very the very first time, but since then I've been getting at it with him. We've been competing like crazy, you know, pushing each other. And um, it's been very helpful. He gives me tips all the time, you know, good ways and, and stuff like that. He even told me that, you know, he watched my highlight tape and he told me to, to do, do my drills like how I do on the, on the highlight tape, you know. This, just for him to, to tell me stuff like that has been, you know, very helpful. I'm very thankful that, that I met him. He has not said yet, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. Y'all better get this. But the only way he gets to say, I know the plans, is he has to get through the pain. Yeah. He has to get through this defining moment. He must make this moment work. And God sent me in here to ask you, what has you stuck in this moment that will not let you go so you can get to the future that God has for you? Slap five with somebody, tell them the devil is a liar. Where I am is trying to tell me it's a prison. But God is trying to show me it's a cocoon. Where I am mentally and emotionally feels like a prison. I can't get, I can't deal with it. But God says you're looking at it wrong. It is not a prison. It is a cocoon and you will break out of it. But you will not be who you were when you went into it. I need you to touch somebody. Tell them I'm breaking out today. I'm 
throwing out the trash. I'm feel like breaking. tired than what you are because we sweating a lot because it's humid. But you're not you're not that tired. It's just that that that, that water kind of holding you holding you back a little bit. Just push through it. It's gonna be good. Z Raider uh, F cross, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You the basic instead of the F. You know what I'm saying? But and and I so you in a stack. Yeah. You you in a stack. That's what I was thinking. No, it'll be like. I just want you to quit. Like I want you to cheat me on your depth. Just like you run the twice route. Oh, okay, okay, that's but okay, okay. you see it's pressure. I need you. You cheat me. Right. Okay. So I just, I just need balls. This gonna be a, a off the throw because I'm getting okay. pressure. All right. It's a five man protection. And yeah, bring one actually. Yeah. I might get hit. <laughs> I just gotta get it out. Don't voice music. What was the worst moment for you during all of this? I'm about to think about that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I didn't come across that. That's a good one right there. Oh man. Worst moment. Shoot. Worst moment probably being a senior. You know, going into your senior year, high hopes. I PR'd in everything in the weight room. Uh, I, was, I was killing in the weight room, killing it on the field. I was, I was feeling better than ever, just health-wise. And to get hit like that, and you know, it's pretty much have everything, you know, just taken from me. And not knowing if you're gonna get your year back. You know, you're a senior. This is your last season to play. This NCAA doesn't have to grant you anything. So, you know, going through that, that, that was, that was a tough blow for me. And you know, just having to be, you know, still have to be in my studies. I was working on my second degree. Still have to just focus on that and still have to do things the right way, you know. It was, it was it was tough, but man, I thank God for my family and my and my best friends. You know, without without them, it, it would have been I probably would have lost it, to be honest. Um, I, I prayed hard, you know, asked God to you know order my steps, and, and that's that's what He did. You know, I just kept my faith in Him, and you know, me being faithful to Him, you know, He showed me the blessings that He's capable of doing. So I'll never let myself ever get that low again. Feeling sorry for yourself about is the absolute thing, that defining moment in your life that is setting the stage for the next great chapter of your life. How you handle what you contend with will shape the next chapter of who you are. Preach Walter Thomas.
Slap five with somebody and tell them this is a defining moment. God, I could stay here and preach all day long. What you are facing is a defining moment. I didn't say a destroying moment. I said a defining moment.